Tesla just released a brand new Model 3 that we have never seen before. In fact, they may have just accidentally leaked the refreshed Model 3 months and months before it was officially set to go live. And speaking of accidents, Tesla may have an accidental discount live on their website right now that you don't want to miss. If you want to save some money, Tesla just raised their prices again, and Tesla will soon be providing FSD for free for select owners around the world. But of course, there's a catch that that you're gonna want to know about. So as always, let's break down the biggest Tesla news of the week that you need to know about, tell you about all these leaks, rumors, price changes, new additions, Tesla remove and stuff. As always, it's been a wild week, so let me break down all the Tesla news that you need to know about. And of course, a huge thanks as always to Masterworks for sponsoring this video. So we've got to start this video with some good news and some bad news, because after a steady amount of price decreases and a overall decline in Tesla pricing, the company just raised the price on every configuration of the Model 3 and Model Y, but there's a secret discount I'll get into uh, that does save you some money if you know where to look. So stay tuned for that. Tesla just added $250 to the price of every Model 3 and Model Y configuration on their website. So not a huge increase, but also annoying that they're doing this to sort of start to see that price slowly creep back up. Uh, so as it stands, here are the prices on all of the Model 3 and Model Y configs. The cheapest Model Y, the standard range all-wheel drive model here in the US is going to be $47,240. Long range is going to be at $50,240. Performance is $54,240. Going over to our beloved Model 3 rear-wheel drive, that is now over $40,000 now, $40,240. Long range is at $47,240. The Model 3 performance sitting at $53,240. I also should mention for anyone looking for a 7C config of the Model Y, some good news here is that Tesla actually just dropped the price of that configuration uh, down from $4,000 to $3,000. So as we saw a price increase, we also saw a $1,000 discount on that particular option. Also, speaking of the all-wheel drive Model Y, Tesla just announced that that configuration is the most efficient electric SUV ever built, beating out the competition like the Audi e-tron, Jaguar I-Pace, Ford Mach-E, and the Volkswagen ID4. Tesla has also made some big improvements to their automatic braking system as of late by now allowing it to work while the car is in reverse and also working now at a speed up to 120 24 miles per hour. Safety is obviously a huge part of Tesla's sales pitch for their vehicles, and there's not a lot else to say here. These cars are some of the most uh, safe on the road. They're award-winning, not just for their design, efficiency, tech, but for that safety. Uh, having the weight of that battery at the bottom of the car does help a lot in rollover instances and stuff like that. And um, these cars have been safe for many, many years, and now they're even safer thanks to the improvements here with ABS. Tesla's also shared an interesting photo of a side-by-side -side of the initial supercharger expansion and where they are today, and the difference, as expected, is pretty staggering. All right, now this next story is big news. Very big news, very interesting news, and honestly sort of confusing because Tesla just introduced, reintroduced the long-range Model 3 in the U.S. here, or I think really U.S. and Canada, after an eight-month hiatus, but the long-range model they reintroduced is not the same car that we had eight months ago. This new model is finally able to be configured once again in the Tesla Design Studio Online and now starts at $47,240. That is $7,000 more expensive than the rear wheel drive Model 3 and also $6,000 cheaper than the performance. So it's sort of smack dab in the middle between those two models. And um, you can decide for yourself whether it's worth it or not. $7,000 more than the standard range, $6,000 less than the performance. Sort of a tough decision to make. And the more you start to dig into this car and its specs and what's changed, the more things start to look a bit confusing. For starters, Tesla lists the range on this long range model as 325 plus. I don't think we've ever seen a plus attribute on the range before, and we really have no idea what this means. But one thing we do know is that the lithium surplus is making EVs overall cheaper than they've been in quite some time. Lucky for you guys, because let's face it, it might be the only true deal we can find on the market this year. That's because energy prices, food prices, of course, new car sticker prices, they're all through the roof and just keep going up. And even if you're making like six figures nowadays, chances are there's nothing left over for savings after your expenses. And if you can put some money away, inflation is literally eating into it as we speak. It's hard to get by, even harder to get ahead, but there are always ways to try to get back what you should have had. And one asset in particular 
particular has outpaced the S&P 500 since 1995 with a record-breaking year in 2022. And of course, that one asset I'm talking about is contemporary art. An asset you can now access without needing millions and millions of dollars or having the right connections. You can literally access it in minutes thanks to Masterworks, who has totally changed the game. Masterworks paid out over $25 million in total to their investors last year, and that's not a one-off figure. Every Masterworks exit to date has returned a profit to investors like you. In fact, they sold another two offerings just in the last five weeks, even as all this economic turmoil and uncertainty continues. With over 700,000 users, Masterworks offerings have sold out in minutes. There's a wait list now for new users to join, but luckily for you guys, I'm going to team up with Masterworks and let you skip that wait list and get instant access to the platform right now by clicking my special link down below. Masterworks has changed the game. They're giving you access to the amazing contemporary art assets. They're making it super simple, super easy. You don't need millions of dollars and they're making everything just a piece of cake. If you want to learn more, check it out for yourself today and skip that wait list. Hit my special link down below to learn more and check out Masterworks for yourself today. For reference, I believe the previous long range model, the one that came before this one, offered 358 miles of EPA estimated range. So this is quite a significant decrease in the long range model. I've seen some speculation that this is done because Tesla doesn't have an official EPA rating yet. So maybe they have that as a placeholder. Maybe they are testing some things to see what the range is going to be, or maybe it can sort of vary. Uh, but that again is a significant drop from what we had just eight months ago. The other thing you'll notice here that's very interesting is that this vehicle does not qualify for the full $7,500 federal tax credit, but only $3,750, which means it's likely Tesla is using an LFP-based battery in this car as well, which is the same thing that we've got going on in the standard range rear-wheel drive model because that car as well does not qualify for that full uh, tax credit because of its non-US made battery, which looks to be what Tesla is doing with this model as well. Now, there are some benefits here. With an LFP battery, you can charge to 100% more regularly and not worry about degradation. So there's that. I'm not sure what charging speeds are. I believe it's a little heavier as well. Uh, hopefully, we'll get more details on this soon. As of recording this video, Tesla has not commented. So the assumption is that it's an LFP battery. Uh, maybe I'll have a little bit more info on that later on in the video. Uh, but as of right now, we don't exactly know what this change is, but it's likely that Tesla has changed the underlying battery here in this long range model. What's also very interesting here is that Tesla says deliveries of this vehicle will start in June, which sort of doesn't mesh with the timeline of the Project Highland rumors we've heard because we've heard those new vehicles, the redesigned model, will begin production in Q3 of 2023, so July, August, and September, and many are confused as to what this long range model will be. Will this be the current design with this LFP based battery for, you know, the time being and this is what you get? Uh, or is this the Project Highland Model 3? This is going to be the first model that Tesla is going to launch uh, when they begin production, maybe a little early in June, and then start selling it shortly after. Obviously, this long range model is one of the most popular Tesla vehicles they make. They had to stop orders of this car because the wait times were so long, because there was so much interest in it. So it would make sense to start with this one first. And since the car was already offline, Tesla can tweak that and sort of uh, use that as the guinea pig uh, for the production process to see how that goes. There's a lot of theories here. We don't exactly know, but many are speculating, at least that I throw it out there, uh, that this is going to be the Project Highland uh, Model 3. This will be the first one. And maybe we see delivery start sooner than expected uh, sometime in June though Tesla's timing always can change. So uh, hopefully in about a month or so, we'll see uh, if this uh, timeline and these uh, theories are true or not. Now, I also wanted to give an interesting update on this whole mobile connector situation because after reading the comments in my last video, I'm growing increasingly concerned over this. Uh, for those who didn't know, back in one of my previous videos, my last one or the one before, I talked about an issue I saw online where many owners were complaining that they were ordering the mobile connector kit. This is the kit that you can use to charge your Tesla with a 1450 or a regular 120 volt outlet or whatever it is. There's a range of adapters here. This is what you're going to need because uh, they no longer come with any of the models here in the US. Um, those owners are ordering it from Tesla directly. They were getting them delivered to them and they looked 
not just like a little used, but like really worn and kind of gross and scratched up and just not right at all. And again, these weren't being sold as, you know, refurbed or used. These are brand new mobile connectors, at least according to Tesla. I'm not exactly sure what Tesla's doing, but the case is clear that they are marketing these as brand new. And not only have I seen more examples on different Tesla like forums and stuff, but multiple comments in my last video were from you guys who said, yeah, I ordered a mobile connector and it came used and they were wondering what to do. So first off, I want to say that's not okay. This seems to be a really um, a growing problem that I'm not sure Tesla has addressed yet. So let me give you my two pieces of advice. One is that I would certainly return that to Tesla and say that's not a acceptable. The level of use that I've seen is beyond like normal wear and tear. It's gross. And if you're paying, you know, hundreds of dollars to get this brand new, you should get a brand new model. This isn't refurb. Um, so definitely recommend uh, asking Tesla for a replacement. Uh, or uh, you can go to your local service center. A lot of them carry very common adapters and uh, pieces, uh, accessories like this in stock. So give them a call if you can drive over there if you're near one and to see if they can sell you one uh, there on the spot that should be brand new. So you can check it to make sure Sure it's all good because um, I've seen a lot of comments, more comments than I expected about uh, uh, people who, like you guys watching these videos who got the mobile connector that was used and it's just not okay, Tesla. Not okay. Moving on to some more happy news though, Tesla just did some back-end work to their mapping system software over the last couple of days that should improve routes. Tesla's always doing this, uh, usually I think every couple of weeks, sometimes they push some major navigation updates, uh, but a couple of users on Reddit were saying that, yeah, we saw a difference here with these particular routes, so looks like Tesla is continuing to work on that. And also, we saw that Tesla just put out a tweet uh, asking for feedback on what they could improve. Looks like they're going to be more active on Twitter, and they have an open call for suggestions. So if you do feel so inclined to jump on on Twitter and uh, tell them to fix their mobile connector issue or something else uh, and maybe add, maybe add CarPlay, for example, uh, you can do that. Uh, I'll leave the tweet link down below if you want to go directly to it. Now, let me rewind for just a second and talk about these price increases that I mentioned at the top of the video because I also mentioned there was a secret discount you could take advantage of if you knew where to look. According to Electrek, uh, the $250 price increase that Tesla implemented on their website does not not currently apply to vehicles in Tesla's existing inventory. And remember, Tesla's existing inventory is full of new cars, usually brand new Teslas that are built, ready to go, oftentimes can be delivered to you way faster than a custom order car. Uh, and in this case, you may be able to save $250 by going with an existing inventory model. Only downside to this is that uh, you can't choose any of the configurations, like it's whatever's already pre-built and pre-configured is what you're going to get. I think you might be able to add FSD or remove it if you can call Tesla. I've heard hit or miss stories on that. Uh, this will qualify for the full $7,500 credit since this is a, a new model. Um, but just thought I'd point that out there. If you are looking to save some money, uh, check out existing inventory because you might be able to save $250 off the price of your new Tesla. Also, speaking of discounts, I came across another interesting story making the rounds this week, and that is from Bloomberg that talks all about the lease loophole in the federal EV tax incentive structure that's in place right now. This article from Bloomberg talks about how the Inflation Reduction Act exempts leased EVs from the restrictions of where the car is made, where the battery materials come from, and how much money the buyer makes, because there's an income cap, if you didn't know, uh, for that $7,500 credit, but only for new vehicles as an outright purchase. Now, this isn't particularly a huge deal for Tesla owners since most of their configurations do qualify for the full amount, except now for the cheapest rear-wheel drive Model 3 and also now uh, the long-range Model 3 as well. So if you are looking to maybe save additional money or you're hitting income cap limits on uh, a purchase, uh, full-on uh, loan purchase or cash purchase of a new car, uh, a lease loophole might be something to look into. And I'm sure there will be some comments below about lease versus buying. We can discuss that down below, but I did want to mention this because I do think it's interesting. I also do want to make a point though to say that Tesla is not transparent about this process and we don't know exactly how that $7,500 that they receive comes to you in the form of a lease payment. It's my understanding, and you can correct me down below in the comments, that Tesla is the one that receives the full credit 
and typically it's assumed that they pass those savings on to you by giving you a lower monthly lease price, though again, they never say. And speaking of lease vehicles, also interesting to see how aggressive Tesla is being with their lease prices on particularly the rear wheel drive Model 3, that base model. For a while, this was at the front page of their website. They were uh, sort of uh, really heavily pushing that entry level model. Now it's about $424 a month to get into this car. This does factor in a $4,500 down payment, $36 months and 10,000 mile per year limit. But even if you adjust this to put zero down, still looking at a lease payment of only 560 per month, which isn't horrible considering the competition and what you're getting with this car. Next up, some interesting news from Elon himself. He says that Tesla is planning to give everyone a one month free trial of full self-driving, specifically to take advantage and try the full self-driving beta once the kinks get worked out and things are more smooth. One of the weird things about this is that we don't really know what that means. And we've seen a lot of progress on this over the years, but who knows when it's going to be, you know, perfect or smooth or whatever it is. Uh, but also it's important to note that this isn't uncommon. Tesla has given, I believe, free EAP, Enhanced Autopilot, and full self-driving trials in the past. It should be a really great way to sort of get owners on board. And if you haven't tried it, this should be a great way to sort of try it out for yourself and see if it's worth it or not. Hopefully we see this in the next six-ish months, but it's really going to depend on when things fall into place. Uh, but a free trial of full self-driving should be coming hopefully sometime this year. I've also got a bit of an interesting update to a story I covered last week about Tesla shipping uh, Giga Shanghai built Model Ys, the rear-wheel drive models, over to Canada to sell there at a bit of a discount. For those who missed the news, basically to make a long story short, it was reported that for the first time ever, Tesla would be exporting Chinese Chinese made Model Ys and selling them here in North America, specifically again to bring that low cost Model Y rear wheel drive to Canada since they don't make that model here in the United States. Also, because of all the tax incentives and stuff, Tesla wants to make and sell as many American made Model 3s and Model Ys possible and keep those here. So, bringing them from Giga Shanghai does make sense for a couple of reasons. And while that still looks to be happening, we also have some new info that Tesla may also be importing Model 3s from China to Canada as well, as they were spotted from Shanghai headed to North America, specifically the state of Washington. And obviously this does make sense for the reasons I previously outlined. Canada doesn't have as uh, strict uh, EV incentive caps and rules as exists here in the US. Uh, though I am wondering, and maybe people know more intricacies than me, if these Model 3s could be the long range LFP based battery ones. I'm not sure if Tesla's doing LFP based Model 3s in Giga Shanghai. If you know, let me know down below. Uh, basically, it seems like they're just sort of, you know, moving uh, these cars over to the Canada and they're sort of utilizing the power of their global supply chain. But I do wonder if these Model 3 long range models coming in June will be imported. Probably not, but just something to think about. But anyways, uh, looks like Tesla, to wrap things up nicely, is utilizing the power of Giga Shanghai, that powerhouse, and uh, will be selling uh, Chinese-made Teslas in Canada very soon. And again, from what I've heard, uh, Giga Shanghai built Model 3s and Model Ys are oftentimes better built uh, than other uh, Teslas from different factories around the world. So make of that what you will. All right, everybody, so I'm curious, what are your thoughts on the Tesla news for the week? Your thoughts on this Model 3 refresh? You think that long range model is better or worse than what we had before? Your thoughts on some of the secret discounts and Tesla in general? They're doing a good job right now, bad job. Hit them up on Twitter and let them know uh, your uh, happy uh, comments or your discrepancies and uh, let Elon know what you're, is on your mind. As always, I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much for your support. I appreciate it. I'm Robert Rosenfeld, and I'll see you all in the next one.